we have two rookie quarterbacks going head to head on Thursday night football. So maybe they have some things that annoy some of their receivers. And maybe, you know what? So they're working on some things. So we see a total of 37 points tonight between the Broncos and the Saints. It's going to be Bo Nix against mm-hmm. Spencer Rattler. And it should be noted uh, line in this game, Broncos laying two and a half. I mentioned the total, it's 37. But the Saints are kind of going to be. I'm not going to say a skeleton crew, but they're down a couple key players in this one. Chris Olave is out. Uh, Rashid Shahid is out, I believe, as well. So they're going to be down a little bit. That's why the Broncos are road favorites here. But, Jenks, this is a mm-hmm. long trip. Do you believe in the Broncos as favorites? I actually do. I like the Broncos. I will be on the Broncos tonight. I'm going to take the Broncos on the money line. And mm-hmm. if Derek Carr were playing for... The Saints, it would be a lot different. But when you have Spencer Rattler in there, I mean, God, Spencer Rattler, Bo Nix. This is a wild match for Thursday night. The fact that we're talking about these two quarterbacks, seriously, is Oregon taking on South Carolina tonight? It's it's wild that this is an NFL matchup. But even though Bo Nix is hasn't been amazing this season. He's gotten a little bit better, and he's gotten more run than Spencer Rattler, and Spencer Rattler now Mm -hmm. doesn't have his primary weapon in Chris Olave. And Spencer Rattler is a guy who will take a lot of chances as well. He has a strong arm, but he knows he has a strong arm, and so he is not afraid to try and thread the needle, which I think will make him mistake-prone. And also, I think that there's a coaching advantage here for Sean Payton. Remember, Sean Payton is going back home to Norwalk. New Orleans, if you will. Dennis Allen used to be his defensive coordinator, so they know each other really, really well. And I think when you look at a Saints team that has just struggled after the first two weeks when they look great, this is a time when it's going to be ugly, and I don't really want to lay the points here, but I think I would just take the Broncos on the money line in an ugly game tonight on Thursday Night Football. Yeah, I do think it's going to be ugly. Uh, but I would side towards the Broncos, at least. Like you said, it feels like Bo Nix at least has more experience under his belt. And the Broncos' defense has been really good. However, mm-hmm. should be mentioned, they do have a key loss here. Pat Sertan uh, going to be out for this one with a concussion. Obviously, he is one of the key pieces on their secondary. But still, I'm not sure if the Saints can even take advantage because they're missing their top two receivers. And they have Spencer Rattler throwing the football. So other angles for this game... I was trying to think, you know, game script, if you do believe in the Broncos in this one, maybe look at Javante Williams, the running back, uh, playing over on his prop. Like, the Saints are still a decent defense. I'm not saying that the matchup is great, but you look at the numbers here, and they're not super high for Javante Williams. I'm trying to find some of these props here on BetMGM. Uh, Here we go. Um, So I think for me, you look at that one, or you go with the receiving prop for Alvin Kamara. If the Saints are down, their top two receivers – And this is an angle I play all the time anyway. Short week, you go with the short and Mm -hmm. dumpy passes to the running back. So Alvin Kamara kind of fits that mold. He's got great hands anyway. The only problem is sometimes his receiving props can be pretty high. Tonight's 35 and a half. I feel like he can get this one. The only problem is, like, it's still Spencer Rattler. Um, I don't know his tendencies that much, but I feel like both of those plays, if I had to play a prop, it would be either Javante Williams or Alvin Kamara over his receiving. Okay. I would go with Spencer Rattler to throw a pick. And I think I think I might just do it tonight. I've been playing conservative on this show. And listen, it's worked out. We've had a great few weeks. But I'm kind of ready to have a big card here pretty soon. Spencer Rattler to throw an interception is minus 130. And so... He threw two interceptions last week against the Falcons. Now he has to go up against an even better defense. This Broncos defense is number one in the NFL overall. The Broncos Mm -hmm. are, are they number one overall? They're top five. They're a really good defense. And again, this is about how he sort of approaches the game. And he's always kind of been this way. He was like this at Oklahoma And that's why he transferred to South Carolina. And then he got better and really shaped himself into an NFL prospect. But he's not afraid to throw the football. And the Broncos have five interceptions this season. That is tied for sixth most in the NFL. Chris Olave is out, so that's going to hurt him. I don't think the Saints are going to be able to move the ball on the ground much. So when Spencer Rattler throws, he'll take some chances. I like him to throw a pick. Yeah, especially if you think the Saints are going to be playing from behind. You know, if you think this is an offense that's going to be pressing, that's going to be trying to at least catch up to the Broncos, and it's not like I think the Broncos are going to score a 1,000 points. But still, I totally see it. Uh, I totally get the logic there. 
what about this total? Like, it feels a little tricky to me because 37 is really low. But yeah. still, it's a short week. I'm not sure how many points the Saints are going to score. And the Broncos are not a team, like I said, that I feel like can really run up the score. Are you still looking at an under? I am. And I guess the reason why is, first of all, let's look at the fact that you have two rookie quarterbacks that are still learning yes. the game. I think number two is this is about the Broncos' defense, which, again, is one of the best defenses in the NFL. And the Saints, now the Saints on paper don't have a good defense, but this is where numbers can be a little bit tricky. They give up a lot of yardage between the 20s, but in the red zone, they're very, very good. These are the top two red zone defenses in the National Football League. So if you want to look at maybe a kicking prop, I think that wouldn't be a bad idea. I think we could see a lot of field goals in this game. I don't think we're going to see a lot of touchdowns. The under is also 3-1 and one in the last four meetings between these two teams. So 37 is low. I don't know if I'm going to play that, but I would lean to the under. Man, I would play a kicking prop, but last week, Tyler Bass, or was that this Monday? Uh, Tyler Bass made me look extremely stupid uh, because I remember playing his field goal prop, mm -hmm. and then he attempted an extra point, and I think it was the worst PAT attempt that oh, I've yeah. ever seen in my life. Do you remember that? <laughs> yes. Like, it was like a ground ball to like the left side or something. I was like, oh, my God. I wagered real American dollars on this guy, so count me out for kicking props for this week. Yeah, I saw that, and I'm sure the coach was like, Tyler, this is not an onside. It's a field. It's not an onside. Why are you kicking a squibbler to the left? I couldn't Gosh. believe it. I thought that had to have been blocked, and it wasn't blocked. He just missed it. Just mm. missed it. <laughs> it was bad. I know. I'm not, like, super hyped about this game, but it feels like we have been handed some really good primetime games with really good matchups. So, like, we were due for one like this. Like, remember, mm -hmm. I think it was last year when we had, like, nothing but stinkers in primetime. And we saw that, like, huge run of unders in primetimes. Uh, now it feels like we've gotten, like, good quarterback matchups. But I don't know. I feel like we definitely see a low-scoring affair here. But 37 is really low. But I do like the Broncos here. It just feels like they are the more known commodity here. Yeah, I think so, too. And that defense, man. I keep going back to their defense, and they do take a hit with Patrick Sertan out for this game because he's one of the mm -hmm. best in the game, had that 99-yard pick six a couple weeks ago. But defense is going to be the story of this game. The Broncos have a better one and a little bit more of an experienced quarterback. So let's go, Denver.